thank you, uh, Mr. Swaminathan. I think you raised a very important point when you said HR policies, understanding the mind of your employees, people, hiring and firing is not the solution. That means you are entering into a very interesting thing, which I don't know many would follow or not, called social engineering. <laughs> why you will try to engineer out and understand if somebody does something wrong, why? You know, in our data analytics things, I always ask two questions to my clients. What you want to do? They have a quick answer. Why you want to do? They start thinking. Similarly, if somebody is doing something, why is he doing it? What is coming in? We have a frameworks, we have policies over the decades we have been doing. So uh, would Mr. Dubash like to throw light on the traditional frameworks that uh, our corporates have been using, methodologies? Is it still relevant with the changing times and uh, environment or you think a new replacement is important? So uh, I think the discussion thus far has been quite specific in terms of uh, issues around specific aspects, right? Uh, where I'm coming from is that uh, one needs to know where to look because if you start trying to poke holes in everything, you know, uh, resources are not uh, unlimited. Now, traditionally, the start for doing any such exercise has been the enterprise risk management sort of exercise that companies have been doing for several years. Uh, uh, and it was put in place by uh, the uh, listing agreements as well uh, in many years ago to have a ERM sort of framework. And most corporates use the COSO ERM framework to try and get that initial sort of risk identification done and then you know you had mitigating actions against each aspect of it. You may be aware that about a year ago, uh, you know, COSO has set up a new task force uh, which is still uh, you know, studying how to come out with a new version of this uh, ERM framework. Uh, acknowledging that the old framework has lost its relevance and therefore a new framework needs to now come in place which is more attuned to what's happening in the real world. Uh, late last year, uh, early this year, the AICPA also uh, you know, did a survey of about 1,000 odd uh, CXO level uh, professionals across the world uh, you know, Americas, Asia, PAC, uh, as well as Europe, on essentially uh, trying to understand as to what are their risk uh, mitigation sort of techniques that they are deploying, you know, globally. The uh, the numbers are quite sort of sort of low, right? It's 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 all in the low 20s and 30s uh, percentages of compliance that were the responses to questions in terms of how effective are your risk management programs? Are people understanding what risk management is? How does that link back to what people are doing? Uh, are the right people involved in, in doing risk management? So on and so forth. So you can well imagine the theme of questions that normally get asked in these sort of surveys and the, and the responses of individuals at the, at the right end of that survey were in the 20 and 30% sort of ranges, right? And the one question that got asked at the end of it all was uh, what are the top three risks that you foresee uh, in the current year? And what do you foresee the top three risk to be in the year 2018? So three years hence from now. And they compared that to what were the similar responses to the previous survey that happened in 2013. Uh, so this survey happens uh, uh, on a bi-yearly basis. Uh, and this is the sixth such sort of survey that the AICPA did. And in, and in both the surveys, it was essentially around reputation, compliance, uh, uh, and regulation which sort of came up as the one, two, three risks, with, with reputation being the number one risk. Now, when you dig deeper into what causes the reputation risk, you know, one of the key elements, almost 50% of the people said that the risk of reputation arises because of, you know, fraudulent acts which are undertaken either by the company or by the company's ecosystem, which then lends a sort of bad name to the company. Uh, and therefore, people got sort of digging deeper on saying, okay, so now how do we even know as to what are these sort of uh, areas where things can go wrong? Uh, and which is where I would tie up all that people have said right now is a new sort of science that is emerging, which is combining the intelligence of the human mind. It is combining the ability of, of technology into what they are calling as risk, risk sensing. Traditionally, th the way that we have approached risk has been, you know, let's understand 
our industry, let's understand our economy, let's understand our company. Uh, some of us have a risk scale that we sort of you know come up with, and then using the risk scale, we try and prioritize the risk that we face, and that's the start of any risk management program. The the issue with that is that is a backward looking assessment. It's what has gone wrong. And a little bit of emphasis happens on what can go wrong, but it's very little less happening on what can go wrong. So what risk sensing is trying to do is trying to use a huge amount of data coupled with some amount of human intelligence to try and predict as to what are the trends that are emerging. So you know, using big data techniques, using analytical techniques, and nowadays you've got these supercomputers that can process uh, you know, millions and billions of you know of transactions in, in the in the space of seconds, of s of actually sort of collating information from social media, from regulatory websites, from uh, uh, you know you know government organizations such as courts, etc., from what people are saying uh, uh, on your social media to what your customers are saying, to what vendors are saying, to what your competitors are saying, to what's happening globally. And then you're essentially using visual tools to try and make some sense of it to say, where is this going? So for example, pharma companies are using this for their product launches. Because nowadays, you've got newer and newer sort of drugs coming up. Uh, pharmaceutical companies want to know what is the probability of, of success of a particular drug at what price points. How should they market that drug? What should they be doing about it, right? Uh, and therefore, they are doing this sort of scan of the environment to understand you know, what are potential patients saying of the drawbacks of, of similar drugs. You know, what are they uh, you know, saying about pricing of competitor products? What did they have to say on, uh, on Twitter or on, or on WhatsApp in, in, in sort of conversations? And they're using that intelligence to then come out with both marketing strategies. They're trying to come out with your pricing strategies in a bid, essentially, to reduce the risk that that corporate faces in a new product launch, which has costed them billions. So I think that sort of theme that I want to leave with you is that when you're looking at risk, and including the whole piece of financial risk and crime and all the rest, right? Uh, you know, we are discovering newer and newer ways in which these crimes are being perpetrated. And each time it sort of comes out, and it's a, like an aha moment for us, and 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 we and we talk about it. But the point is, nobody foresaw that, you know, whereas the individuals who undertook that, that whole crime were experts in being able to do that. So I think the time, for, the time has come for us to look ahead uh, of saying how can we use data today and, and, and draw parallels of that going ahead such that we are able to stay one step ahead of the perpetrator. I think that's the piece that Nishad I had in mind when I said that had the traditional ERM sort of frameworks lost their relevance, and I think COSO has also acknowledged that, so has the ICPA, uh, and there are steps underway to try and refresh that entire uh, sort of model. Yeah, very well, Mr. Dubash, I fully agree to you. Yeah.